Hey guys, welcome to Sonoma, California, and Range Rover flew me out here to test drive this, the brand new Range Rover. This is the P530, and in this video, we're going to do something that very few people do with this vehicle, and that is take it off-road. Now, let's start with the way we usually start, and that is the design. Now, if you swing the camera, well, I was going to stay over there, but it's gone. There was an old Range Rover. Uh, it's no longer there, but this is the new one, and as you can tell, it's kind of more of an evolution than a revolution. So to me, it feels like somebody kind of took the old one and went like that. Just aerodynamically basically gave it a very severe facelift. So everything is much more aero, everything is much more smooth. Uh, the biggest difference, of course, is that this is the first edition, which starts at $164,000. And for that, not only do you get 23s with Pirellis, but you get $5,000 massaging seats which do things like a hot rock massage. Also, you get this really cool color, uh, and uh, under the hood, you get a BMW sourced 4.4 liter, let's pop open the hood, that produces, get this, 530 horsepower. Now, Range Rover says that that is good for a top speed of 155 miles an hour, zero to 60 between 4.4 and 4.6 seconds. Now, there are other variations and powertrains, uh, but this being the first edition, uh, this, of course, is the top dog. Uh, there is a hybrid coming, which will have a 38 kilowatt hour battery, so you can go up to 40 miles on all electric, but since we're here talking about this one, let's keep going. Now, one of the things that we're gonna do today is we're gonna go on an off-road course. I doubt a lot of people are gonna take $164,000 starting Range Rover off-road, but we're gonna get to do that in this video. Uh, so let's go around the back. Uh, talk about some of the other interesting design features. Uh, Range Rover says that this lighting design uh, is the first use of disappearing taillights. So you can't see the taillights until you actually power them up. And you know what? I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'll start the car up and I'll hit my brakes and you can see what they're talking about. Hold up, I'm trying to find my key, which has now disappeared. And somehow, ah, my videographer has the key. There we go, let's try again. <laughs> there we go, now you can see the taillights. Disappeared, there they are. Kind of cool, huh? Of course, it's something that people have been doing for a long time, which is uh, taking their uh, vehicles and blacking out the taillights, but now it's done in a much more factory sort of way. Um, let's open up the tailgate. Let's open up the tailgate. Come on. Come on, tailgate. Open up. It doesn't want to open up, probably because the car's running. So let me turn the car off. And we'll try that again. All right, let's try again. Open up the tailgate. There it goes. Uh, and one of the things you'll find is that it has a little bit of a, and in this first edition, it's carpeted uh, tailgate that you can, of course, if you're British, sit down and take your rifle out and go pheasant hunting or whatever the Brits do uh, in these very luxurious vehicles. But obviously, uh, tons of room uh, behind the second row. This is not the long wheelbase version, uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is a car that you would probably be just as comfortable driving as you would be sitting in the back seat. You can, of course, lower it uh, electronically, both the car and the rear seats. And of course, you can close the tailgate electronically. Let me demonstrate. Pretty cool, that little clamshell design. Now let's uh, let me get my videographer here to jump in the back seat. Uh, Tesla introduced these uh, recessed door handles and now they've become ubiquitous in the industry. So let me show you uh, the back seat because like I say a lot of people will probably enjoy the comfort of the back seat of this vehicle uh, and it is very luxurious very dare I say leathery uh, lots of leather uh, and this one actually does have uh, three abreast seating I believe I think this actually I think this actually comes up so you could put three people back here not that you will uh, but yeah look at that you've got a little footrest right there uh, for I think the Range Rover calls this um, first class seating, as if you were in an airplane uh, and as if you had the ability to completely recline your seat, which I suspect you do. Now, one of the more interesting 
uh, things that Range Rover does. I noticed this right away, and I'm just guessing at this. We've got uh, two tail fins. Uh, obviously, one is probably for the radio, uh, and the other one, I'm guessing, is for GPS and Wi-Fi. And then if you look very closely right there, you'll see a little camera. And what that is, of course, is your uh, rear view mirror camera. So I'll show you in the front. So let's get in the front. Uh, you can have both a traditional rear view camera. Let's start it up again. Let me, let me demonstrate. Traditional rear view camera, or if you flip it over now, you can see the Defender parked behind us. Uh, and that's also becoming very ubiquitous. Um, so uh, that's where that little camera goes. Let's get my little sheet sheet here and I can kind of give you some more information about this car. Now, like I said, 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 that's sourced from BMW. You'll find that in the uh, Jaguar F type as well. Uh, fuel consumption is a little bit uh, unrated yet because on this sheet it says anywhere from 11.4 to 28.24.8 so somewhere in between uh, but i'm sure once this is officially rated we'll get better numbers on that uh, we're looking at a car uh, that starts at 2585 uh, kilograms if we multiply that by 2.2 about 5700 pounds uh, and uh, of course full air suspension um, and different drive modes, which we'll demonstrate in a second. Now, uh, this first edition has some really interesting features. Uh, I've got this wood uh, that is unique to the first edition. Um, and then, of course, right there, if you can show them, you can see first edition. Just uh, very, very gently uh, inscribed in the wood. You get not one, but two glove boxes uh, and of course this being a Range Rover you also get my favorite iced tea and not one but two settings of the cooled refrigerator box uh, in the center console which is uh, actually pretty cool and then of course you know cup holders wireless charging here we have uh, our dual temperature control and since this is a British car we are in um, not, not uh, Fahrenheit but Celsius um, the new uh, touchscreen is a little bit more um, quick. It's not as slow to react, which is good because in the past, both uh, JLR products, I mean by that, by Jaguar and La Land Rover, have had screens that have been a little laggy. Uh, but probably the most interesting thing here are the seats. Uh, you can see, like I was saying, not only do you have full control, but you have seat heat uh, that allows you to not only do adjustments, but also, there you go, massage. So uh, if you want, I'm going to go to more. Oh, those are the back seats. We don't want to adjust those. But anyway, you can, I think there's 28 different ways that you can adjust this seat. Uh, and if you're into uh, massaging seats, you can also get uh, different. Where am I missing this? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Much appreciated. So there's your hot stone massage. Look at that. Hot stone rolling uh, and... Uh, intensity across the bottom yeah yeah that is uh that is pretty comfy i'm not a big fan of uh, massaging seats it feels like there's uh, a bag of snakes under my seat but it is rather comfortable and i can see why people would really enjoy that um, some other things that i think are noteworthy of course is that you have heads-up display uh, a full digital screen in front of you um, steering wheel controls uh, and then I, I really like this kind of scrumptious dual color, dual tone steering wheel. Uh, one of the things that, from my point of view, this car is is just a tiny bit on the stodgy side. Uh, probably that's because if you want the more youthful, more fun one, you're going to want the Range Rover Sport, which is still coming. Um, so kind of the whole point of this vehicle, obviously, is that you're ensconced in uh, leather and wood and, uh, you know, as much hot massage as you can tolerate. Um, you also get uh, Range Rover's different drive modes. Um, so there you have it. it. Starts out in comfort, but you get grass, gravel, mud and ruts, sand, uh, rock crawl, wading, and uh, a configurable setting. Uh, but the Range Rover people said they want us in gravel and snow, so I will select that. And let's see what this is like off-road. Now, rolling on 23s is not going to be the most uh, well, off-road worthy setup that you can. 
The problem, if you're wondering about 23s, is that the bigger the wheel, the smaller the sidewall, and the smaller the sidewall, obviously the less um, cushion you have, uh, and the more um, potential tire you have that can either get pinched or poked, uh, making it not the best setup. Usually for off-roading you'd want smaller wheels and bigger tire versus bigger wheels and smaller tires. But you know, uh, this is Range Rover, uh, this is the first edition, so you are going to be on 23s. So let's uh, try and see how this thing does on 23s. For a second there we had our camera going, let's see if we can go back to them. There you go, uh, those are always nice. Let's try the 3D, let's see what that does. Oh, I love that. Uh, that is just a lot of fun. And then of course this is kind of interesting where uh, the camera basically takes out uh, everything that is on the inside of the car so you can actually see through it. So you can kind of see what you're running over, which is very useful uh, if you're doing some serious off-roading. Um, and uh, let's see, let's go back to the other one. There we go, look at that, it's been around. And there's the old Range Rover, no, is that the new one? See, that's the thing, I can't even tell if that's the old one or that's a new one. Oh, that's the old one. That's a new one, sorry. So a new one. Very similar to the old one. Evolutionary, not revolutionary. So we have, like I said, about 530 horsepower, which is more than enough uh, to go off-roading. Uh, and if I'm being real, most people will not uh, take this car on anything beyond like this kind of country road. Um, in the past, I've talked to Land Rover about who uh, and how these vehicles are used off-road and they will tell you that uh, it's usually seven years or the third owner is when it finally is taken off-road. I, I can see that. I mean, why would you want to endanger your $165,000 car uh, by putting it in harm's way? And by the way, this color is really interesting. It's kind of a gold color uh, and it's um, kind of matte. So it's it's pretty cool. Oh, I'm trying to find the name of the color here and I've forgotten. Sunset Gold Satin. Uh, so if you're into golds, uh, this is just a lot of fun. So we're going to be uh, uh, going downhill right now. I think we have our little guy. He's going to tell us what to do. Howdy. Hello, you all right? Yeah, we're on camera. So let me know, what, what is this about? So what? we're going to get you set ready for the off-road drive. Okay, great. Right? Yep, yeah. Super. Uh, do you want two minutes to finish? Are you all no, right? Go for it. Okay, oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what I'd like you to do is bob the gearbox into neutral for me. So it's half a click up. So just a gentle click up. Okay. That's it. So squeeze the triggers you would normally. That's it. Perfect. And the low range buttons. Just the little button on the right hand side. So three little buttons together. Can you see? Over towards the passenger. That's the one. Give that a good press for me. Okay. There we go. And. Because they've put you in grass, gravel and snow already, yep. it's now going to raise the vehicle to off-road height. So how many inches is that? Not sure in inches, but 75 well, millimetres. <laughs> I should work that out, shouldn't I? <laughs> there we go. Um, hill descent automatically comes on for you. Right yeah, there, you've yeah. got that there. And that is no, basically like going to do the hard work for you going down this next hill. Right. Okay, oh, so it's... I just wanted to make sure the track... Very I worked it very steep. There's, there's certain bits where it really drops, and I think it read about 28 degrees on my Defender when we were setting the course up, so, uh, so it's pretty good. Um, so, you. if you'd like to go back into drive for me, sir. Yep. There we go. And just pop your off-road cameras on for me. Can you see that there? Uh, just, just below. Yeah, there we That's go. That's the one. So you can see them lovely 23-inch alloys as you go around. Yes. And um, we're just going to set hill descent control to a nice target speed. So if you just bring your steering wheel straight for me. Can you see the cruise control settings on the right-hand side of the steering wheel? It's like I... a silver toggle. That's the one. Yep. Knock that down two clicks, and it's going to hold you around five miles an hour. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's perfect. Super. So when you're ready. Yep. Hands on the steering wheel, feet off the pedals. And away we go. This afternoon. Thank you. Well, you know, it's not only uh, rare that you have a low range in a vehicle of this nature, uh, but you have a locking, as you can tell, rear and center diff right there. No locking front, uh, but uh, let's give it a shot, see if I can slow this vehicle down using the cruise control. And it tells me right there how, how quick I have it set to. So now I have it set to two miles an hour. Um, and you know, with um, a lot of suspension travel and with a lot of um, technology, you can make these vehicles do something that most of them shouldn't do, which is uh, give you a comfortable, supple, and uh, hopefully um, safe ride off-road. Uh, and like I say, I got, I got to be honest, I'm, I'm impressed uh, that this vehicle is just slowly kind of crawling its way down, but it's a very steep hill. Now, of course, 
the one thing that is always a constant on these programs that we're taking on is that very rarely will they ever put you on a course that the vehicle can't do, right? I mean, that would be silly. Um, so let's face it, they've, they've tried this multiple times. People have done this, so the car is going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine. I'm going to be just fine. And it just locked the center diff automatically. It's kind of fun that, that Land Rover does that, where it shows you what the vehicle is actually doing. So if you do happen to uh, own a ranch or a farm or our landed gentry in the UK and you decide to go pheasant hunting somewhere, you know, deep in your property, then I, I think this is a vehicle that's great for that. And I was talking to my driving partner and he's exactly right. He said that this is the kind of vehicle that if you're the Queen of England, uh, you're going to drive yourself. So it's fun to have both a car that you could ride in on the back or you can drive in uh, by yourself and go explore all the nooks and crannies of your estate. And I gotta say, I, I, I'm impressed just how comfortable this ride really is, because, um, like I said, 23s are the antithesis of, of wheels and tires that you would want on an off-roader, and yet it, we're just casually moseying down, down uh, into this uh, little ravine. Uh, now, the other thing that I like about this vehicle uh, quite a bit uh, is uh, it's uh, old school, dare I say, like I said, a little stodgy uh, interior design. You know, Tesla has kind of reinvented uh, what modern luxury is all about. So no longer do you have vehicles that are swayed in just tons of cow hide. Uh, but now most of these materials in a modern luxury definition are done in you know, fake or um, man-made plastics or other sorts of materials. I just hit my brakes and I went skidding down a little bit. That was interesting. Interesting. I hit my brakes and I lost a little bit of traction. Yeah, yeah that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty good. Quite, uh, good out here, yeah, I also like the fact that all these guys are British. So there we go. Let's see what. Let's see where this is going to take us. Uh, and I have to give uh, a lot of uh, credit to Range Rover that they actually do uh, put their vehicles in harm's way, uh, and that they still have. Um, the DNA that the original Defender uh, came with, which was, you know, the ability to cross large tracks. And there's a pheasant, look, or whatever that bird is. Uh, there's two of them. <laughs> so if I, had, if I had a gun, we'd have lunch. <laughs> but like I say, I, I have to give them credit that, that they're still maintaining that DNA and, 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 you know, putting things like low ranges into this. And let's talk about competition. You know, if I were in the market for one of these, I suspect the other vehicles that I'd be looking at are things like uh, if you're a Tesla buyer, the Model X. Uh, more traditionally, it might be the G-Wagon um, or even a Porsche Cayenne it might be another competitor to this. Uh, I just got to test drive uh, the uh, Aston Martin DBX 707, which has 700-ish horsepower. Uh, and, you know, the Bentayga uh, might be another vehicle that, that people might cross shop this with. Uh, and I think Range Rover slash Land Rover know that, and so they keep upping the amount of luxury. And that's the one thing I would say about this vehicle. It, like, takes, doesn't redefine luxury, but it takes it to the next level. You know, if you will, takes it to 11, you know, the old Spinal Tap. So now um, there are more seat adjustments, there's more uh, leather, there's nicer leather, there's more wood, uh, there's more horsepower. Everything has just been amped up uh, to the next degree. Um, and that's, you know, I think what the customers want. I don't think that, that um, Ranger will have any issues selling this vehicle. So let's see how it does going uphill. Now that we've gone downhill and we'll kind of finish this degree, finish this um, degree of difficulty uh, which is three out of ten. I just got back from driving Jeeps and Moab, so I may be a little bit jaded. Like I said, this is you know certainly very steep and deep, but not a lot of articulation, not a lot of uh, uh, different uh, cause for losing traction. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll park the vehicle over here, and we'll get out, and we'll kind of close up this video. Uh, and kind of give you my final thoughts on the new uh, Range Rover. Put it in park. 
Uh, let's close this up. So there you have it. You can see just how much uh, wheel travel you got, which is considerable. In inches, I suspect uh, that is probably, um, in terms of ground clearance, you're probably looking at maybe 10 to 12 inches of ground clearance, uh, which is very sizable. Um, uh, and you know, in the past, vehicles like this would have a difficult time going off-road, but now because of all the wizardry of the terrain management, the air suspension, you can take big tires and big wheels and put them on a big vehicle uh, and be confident that you won't be uh, getting yourself stuck. Anyway, this has been your first drive off-road review of the brand new uh, Range Rover. Um, and uh, there is more coming, so please stay tuned. Go to alltfl.com for all of our news, views, and reviews, our TikToks, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Ciao.